Hello everyone, my name is Devashish and I welcome you all to this video. So in today's video, we are going to learn how to find relationship between different functions within IDA Pro. Uh, so in today's example, I have taken a very simple uh, Windows application I, and I have opened it in IDA Pro to kind of demonstrate how does this thing work. And um, so the first thing that we are going to learn in today's video is called cross reference. So what is cross reference? Cross reference is an IDA feature which actually allows you to you know find relationship between two different functions. So um, to demonstrate that, I'll take uh, this example. The function here is called string match. Uh, so uh, if you want to see uh, this particular function, where else in this program are referenced, you have you can use cross reference functionality within IDA Pro. So how to do that? So you need to just go to that function and the shortcut for getting cross reference is control X. So if you press control X here, you are going to see all this X refs or cross reference to string match. So what does this mean? Which means, so these other functions are actually calling the string match function. This is actually, you know, the orientation, the direction of the function, which means as th this, uh, this function is actually uh, be, uh, is situated in memory after the string match that is why the direction is down 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 like that and um, this is the address so suppose you want to jump to this uh, do renew net io function so you need to just select this and press ok as you can see uh, this uh, do renew net io function is calling string match function at, at this offset so this is how you can actually find out, you know, what all functions are calling what all functions. Uh, so uh, in the same manner, you can find the cross reference of, so, of this function as well, this uh, parent function as well. As you can see, uh, if you just select this function and press control X, you will get to know that, you know, this function is being, call, is being called by win main. If you select this, as you can see, this is our main function and uh, this main function is calling do renew net io function at this particular position so this is actually um, this is how cross reference actually works and it will actually help you identify you know relationship between two functions so this is actually sometimes not enough when you are actually dealing with a huge application uh, so for that um, there is a there is another functionality which you can use within IDA, which is known as proximity browser. So to get the proximity view of any function, what do you have to do? Uh, you have to click on any function and right click and go to proximity browser. And once you do that, you are going to see something like this. I'll come back to that later on. You know, I'll explain. So before that, let's read about uh, the proximity browser. So as you can see, this feature was implemented, uh, was uh, this feature was introduced in IDA 6.0, the proximity browser. And this is what it does. The proximity view allows the reverser to see and browse relationship between functions, global variables, constant, etc, etc. Uh, we can we can use the PV for example to visualize the complete call graph of a program to see the path between two functions or what global variable and references are referenced uh, from some functions. So as you can understand, this is really helpful when you are actually you know um, trying to figure out uh, control flow of, of any program that we are analyzing within IDA Pro. So let's try to understand what we are getting here. So as you can see, we are at the main function and from there we have switched to proximity view. Uh, so uh, let me quickly show you if you want to you know, switch back to your graph view, this is what you have to do. You have to select the function, right click, go to graph view. As you can see again, we are at the graph view. So let's go back to proximity view, proximity browser. Yeah. So this is what this mean. Uh, so double uh, which uh, so as you can see, W win main is at center point and there are a lot of, you know, arrows are coming out of uh, win main. So arrows are actually, you know, reaching other boxes, which is having other functions present in the same binary. So which means that win main is actually directly referencing these functions. 
within this binary. So uh, when actually you are checking cross reference, you will only get an idea of you know what how this how two individual functions are actually you know referencing each other. But in proximity view, you can understand uh, relationship between uh, not only two functions but many different functions. So if you just zoom out, you will get a more you know um, more broader view of this control flow. Uh, as you can see, you know, a lot of functions are being invoked by WinMen here, like that. Yeah. Now, uh, one more thing I need to mention here that there are, you know, couple of views you can, uh, the couple of ways you can actually visualize these things. So as you can see in this graph, there are many nodes. Uh, this is one node. This is one node. This is one node. And as you can see, uh, this node is empty. I mean, this node doesn't have any child. So. Uh, to minimize the complexity, as you can see, IDA has you know re removed some of those you know uh, nodes. So as you can see, uh, this particular node IDA you know has not expanded. So uh, to expand uh, this particular node, what you can do, you need to just go to this node, right click, and what you have to do, you have to do expand node. As you can see, IDA has expanded this node for us. And obviously the function, uh, the graph, uh, the view has become very complex after, you know, expanding that. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to go here, right click and collapse parent. Now we have, you know, uh, simpler view what we are actually able to see earlier. So yeah, uh, one more thing I need to show you here uh, one more functionality of uh, proximity browser and to show you can actually switch views as well so this is one of the views that you get when you you know move to proximity browser you can right click and these are the views that is supports as you can see there are uh, this is actually uh, diagraph layout and you can uh, sh switch to radial tree lay ray layout uh, as you can see we are getting a view something like this this is this is where your main function stays and this is actually you know all the other function the main function actually um, is referencing or calling uh, it depends on the situation uh, you may not find you know all this view useful uh, in all the cases so for that you have to you know uh, kind of understand uh, to get a better understanding you know of the control flow switch between different layouts to kind of understand which one actually suits best for your uh, situation uh, so this is we have seen radial tree layout and there are polar layout as well as you can see again this is our main function at the center and actually these functions are actually you know, referencing these functions and hence and this function is referencing this function and these are all these nodes that is that are scattered uh, again, you can go to the uh, right click on main and move to circle layout. As you can see, we have something like this. As you can see, this is also pretty complex. Uh, and, and in this particular view, I'm not able to even distinguish the main function. So anyway, so this is definitely not useful uh, for, uh, in this current scenario. So, okay, let's move to tree layout and this is how this tree layout looks like. Uh, this is also, you know, a lot of nodes present in current window. That is why, you know, this is also not very useful. So I'll switch back to just a second. I'll switch back to, I'll switch back to diagraph layout. So this is uh, where, you know, we started and uh, you can hide nodes as well. You need to select right click hide node that will hide your node you know if you hide unnecessary nodes that you do not need it will obviously you know make the uh, make this graph much more simpler so you can hide like this hide node right click hide node like that and if you keep on doing this uh, I mean keep on hiding unnecessary nodes from your graph it will be much more simpler and there is one more feature I need to tell you here uh, which is very interesting uh, very interesting and useful for doing vulnerability research and that is you know find path 
so how can you you know access that particular feature you need to go to any node uh, any function node and right click on that function and the first option that you'll see here is find path you need to select that find path and it will give you a list of function uh, and you can select those uh, select any of those function from the list and it will tell you you know is if there is any direct connection between you know this uh, main function and that particular function you have selected so this is quite useful so uh, so when it is useful so for example if you are looking out for you know vulnerable function which usually you know comes up with some of the security related consequences for example mem cpy string copy so you can actually you know identify those functions uh, from this function window and try to you know uh, understand the code path uh, the function can be reached through different code path so let's take an example here if you take the example of mem cpy 0 here so suppose you want to find out uh, the you know code path from main to mem cpy 0 so here is our win main and here is our mem cpy mem cpy function so if you want to find out what is the relationship how uh, the control flow can reach to mem cpy 0 this is what you have to do you have to select the node which is having the main function right click on it and select find path find path as you can see there is no direct path to uh, mem cpy so since this is actually quite simple it from here clearly that win main is you know making a call to do set class id 6 net io and this function is referencing to mem cpy 0 so for that we do not need actually you know find path functionality but if there is any very complex path you can actually uh, if if the call is not very straightforward or the or the call graph is not very straightforward uh, you can actually use this find path functionality to find out you know the path between two different functions so you can actually you know if you are uh, specifically looking for some vulnerable function which has you know uh, which comes with some security implication you can find out path to such function uh, using this uh, proximity view within ida so uh, i think there is some error i don't know uh, that is why it is showing function window okay so usually it should give you a window like this uh, just let me quickly show you it should actually you know uh, give you a window like this but i don't know for some reason it is not working uh, yeah so usually you know it should give you a uh, call graph like this that this function is calling this function this is calling this 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 that and it should you know remove all other uh, you know nodes uh, that you are not interested in uh, right now it, it is going to remove all of those so that's how it is it works there are a few other things as well you can actually you know explore uh, such options for example you can see that you know expand children collapse children and there is also you know uh, this path you can explore what if you want to you know uh, highlight uh, some of the path with different colors that you can do you can delete path you can you know make it visible or hide it or you can get details also also of, of different you know graph and node and their you know node and their connectors uh, so that's all i wanted to discuss in today's video so i hope you have found this video useful you know if you are new to my channel and you are uh, you are liking the kind of content I usually upload on this channel. Please consider subscribing to this channel as well. So thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.